Success Insight shares the stories of the people with passion and drive who make things happen in the world. Here's your host, Howard Fox. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Success Insight podcast. Our guest today is Michelle Wagner. Michelle is the author of the children's book, Mickey on the Move. Inspired by her son's hearing journey, Michelle wrote Mickey on the Move, which is definitely a big-hearted book that tells the story of how a young boy with deafness is aided by his mother and teachers in navigating new school experiences. Now, Mickey on the Move was published by Mascot Books, and the illustrations in Mickey on the Move were created by Jenny Phelps. Michelle, welcome to the Success Inside Podcast. Hi, how are you, Howard? Doing very well. I, I see sunshine over your, your shoulder there, so that's a good thing. You're probably in a beautiful place in the world, I would imagine, that uh, relishes sunshine. Yeah, little town called St. Helena in Napa Valley. Fantastic. So I have to ask, do you drink, do you like wine? Yes, I do. <laughs> it's funny because everybody asks that, but there's a lot more to do here, I think, than drink wine. <laughs> And I, I'm sure there are. I have some friends that have, are up in, I think it's Hillsburg, up in the, the Valley area. So, Michelle, you wrote this children's book, Mickey on the Move. Definitely want to dive into it. A very uh, you know, poignant story. And I don't know if you realize this, but we had a story way back in our first year of the podcast. We interviewed a gentleman, Thomas Caulfield, who wrote a book called Ephetha, Growing Up Professionally De- Profoundly Deaf and not dumb in the hearing world, a basketball player's transformational journey. This was about his son, Christopher. And so when I read about the book, I was like, oh my God, this is such a great connection here. I have to introduce the two of you. But you know, before we get into Mickey on the Move, can you share a little bit about yourself and this journey to wanting to write this book? Sure. You know, I didn't know what journey I was going to be on, you know, with Mickey finding out he was discovering he was deaf at a very young age and the path that we took in trying hearing aids and finally going to UCSF to get further hearing tests and see if he was eligible for bilateral cochlear implants. And um, that was a long process, just the operational part, because it's like brain surgery for a young child. And then, and then the journey after... You know, now Mickey's almost 13, which I can't believe. And he is talking and interacting. He's finally mainstreamed. And that's sort of where this book takes off from his beginning of mainstreaming here in St. Helena. And I just hope that it inspires everybody and brings awareness to other things out there. Because, I mean, I know growing up, I didn't go to school with any children that were deaf. You know, and Mickey has bilateral cochlear in, in implants. And I remember getting, having to get glasses in fifth grade. And I thought that was the end of the world. And the end of the world, that embraces. Right, exactly. But, you know, it's, it's our, our differences that make us all unique and make us what we are and make everyone more interesting as well. So I'm curious, uh, one, you used the word mainstreaming twice, and or a couple, at least twice, but I want to chat a little bit about that. But before we do, with Mickey, and how soon after birth do, do you realize there's something going on here? My husband at the time and I um, decided on Jackson, and we actually, in 2010, we went through another whole year process of just adoption. We adopted him from Russia. Ah, okay. And he was in an orphanage. Okay. Um, kind of went from, you know, being born in the hospital to, uh, he was a preemie. And now he's he's really tall. For 12 years old, he's five foot four, strong, athletic. So the orphanage and even the doctors there involved did not let us know that he was deaf. And so we brought him home just before he turned two and just thought it was some sort of language barrier. And then, um, like I said, after taking him to some doctors, realizing he had profound hearing loss, he was completely deaf and still is today when he doesn't have his cochlear implants on. Okay. And, you know, 
13 years old. I mean, I'm quite a bit older than 13, but I can remember those are important years of my life. And I can imagine the journey, you know, from being an infant to being 13 and little boys at 13 years old get into a lot of things. And so uh, definitely, I, 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 I would imagine that's a part of the story, you know, Mickey on the move in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's mostly like, on the. I mean, he rides his bike everywhere in town, which is great, but mostly being on the move from school to school because going, going into the fifth grade, it was like his fifth school because he was going to a, a specialty school for the deaf and hard of hearing. And then he was in a special day class that was also for the deaf and hard of hearing. And then he went to an elementary school and then this is the middle school, which yes, it's those times. It's that, you know, age 12 and 13 where puberty and everything else comes into play. There you go. So now let's, if we can, let's shift a little bit to the book, Mickey on the Move. When did this inkling or insight for you come up or come to be that, you know, I really need to create something from this and share this story? How did that come about? I just want to bring awareness about everything, about all of life's challenges. And sort of when COVID happened, it was like the perfect opportunity to like take the time and focus on getting this done. And it's a very simple story, easy to understand, which was the whole purpose of it. Big picture, because Mickey is very visual. And, you know, they, they, they say that, um, you know, when one sense is weak, another sense makes up for it. Right. And certainly his eyesight and his visual acuity is amazing. Fantastic. And, Tell us a little bit about the story that you have presented. I mean, some wonderful graphics, but tell us a little bit more about the story. How does it progress? I mean, children's books are typically, you know, 35, 45 pages, somewhere in that range. Tell us a little bit about its construction story you're sharing. Well, this is a shorter book, and it basically progresses from his going to his first day at a new school. And his second experience mainstream, but his, you know, it's a big new school, you know, kind of not knowing what to expect. Maybe more nerve wracking for me as the mother right. than him. He was just, he's always filled for excitement with something new and he knows he'll get to see friends. And the story is just really the first day of school and then the next couple, you know, days or weeks and how certain things come up where he tries to solve the problems himself. Like when something's too noisy because he hears differently than we hear with our ears. And so a lot of outside noise is very distracting. You know, he kind of, instead of wanting to eat lunch where all the kids are and it's loud and fun and the cafeteria are outside, he, he wants to go to the library. He's very positive. He's also extremely empathetic and it, it's just kind of like a day in the life I love for the readers to just kind of put their self in his shoes for a day. Okay. And the, the overall message for the book, and again, you use the word mainstreaming. So I actually, okay, let, let's talk about this idea of mainstreaming. What does that mean for you? And, and how does that help the reader who, because there's other parents out there. I mean, my own niece has a, a young child who is developmentally challenged and she's going through, she and her husband and the, her kids are all going through a, a journey. What is the mainstreaming? How to help me and our listeners understand what you mean by that? So as I mentioned, the other schools that he went to at first, all the other children had cochlear implants or some type of hearing device and perhaps even other challenges, whether they be emotional, physical, or mental, aside from those. And Mickey mainstreaming means he's in a classroom in an entire school with other typical children. He's the only child in the district that does have cochlear implants. His friends are accepting, and the teachers, and the community, and that he's not afraid to ask for help or let others know what's going on. And he can navigate just fine. Okay. You know, it's very interesting asking for help. Is this something that came natural for him? And you mentioned he's very empathetic and very caring. 
is this something that also was informed by you and your husband to, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help or, you know, it, let people know what you need? I kind of learned to let people know what I need later in life and ask for help and then it's okay. And th- that everybody needs help. And, you know, I think modeling that and making a child feel comfortable, both on my part, the other students and teachers or people on a sports team, you know, bringing awareness. Yes, it's more difficult for Mickey to hear. Sometimes things need to be repeated or he's difficult to understand. And just putting it out there right away, you know, so there are no surprises and nothing gets lost out there in outer space and, you know, misunderstood. And, you know, when a child feels safe and feels like it's okay, the same as an adult.